Welcome to everyone who's here. I see it's just turning two o'clock, so let's get started. Um, today we have Amy Lloyd, who is um, Lord, sorry, who is a representative of the Ice Age Trail Alliance, and she's going to tell us about the trail and also about the big challenge that's coming up in October. Amy. Hello, thank you so much. Yes, my name is Amy Lord. Um, I am the Outreach and Education Manager with the Ice Age Trail Alliance. Thank you so much uh, to the Door County Library for um, hosting me and having this presentation about exploring the Ice Age National Scenic Trail. Uh, here's our agenda today. Uh, definitely want to tell you a little bit about the Ice Age Trail, the story and the history of the trail. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the Alliance. Um, we have lots of resources to share um, in terms of helping you plan your hike. So we'll spend a lot of time uh, talking about those resources to make sure you feel ready and prepared uh, to go explore the Ice Age Trail. And then yes, last but not least, um, we have our Mammoth Hike Challenge coming up here in October. We're super excited. And we've got um, a little bit of information to share about that as well. So uh, we have the chat function. So for those of you listening in, um, feel free and, and put your questions in the chat and we'll make sure you get uh, the information uh, you're looking for today. So with that, I'm gonna jump right in. So the Ice Age National Scenic Trail, I know we're virtual, but uh, maybe give me a little reaction of if you've heard of the Ice Age National Scenic Trail, or maybe you've hiked a little bit of the Ice Age National Scenic Trail. Um, it is a thousand mile footpath, a thousand mile trail, and it traces the significant glacial features throughout the entire state of Wisconsin. So um, we are still actually building the trail, but when it's all said and done, it's actually gonna be closer to 1200 miles. But when we talk about National Scenic Trails, we talk about stories, you know, what is the story of it? And the story of the Ice Age Trail goes back a few years, as in a few thousand years. Um, back when glaciers were common um, 15,000, 30,000 years ago, the image on screen is kind of what it looked like thousands and thousands of years ago where the glacier covered Wisconsin and then you know the northern continental, um, the globe. So that red dot represents kind of where I'm at. I'm in Southern Wisconsin, Dane County. So you can kind of see where the glacier is with Wisconsin. You've got the outline of the Great Lakes. And then when we, when we zoom in a little bit, we, we see this image. So this is actually where the glacier from the most recent ice age where it was in Wisconsin. So, you know, this, these huge sheets of ice came into Wisconsin. And it's, it's kind of sometimes hard to imagine because it's over years, you know, years and years and years. But this is where they made it. They, they kind of stopped. Um, and you can see, you know, multiple sheets of ice, multiple lobes of ice. and my mouse is tracing, oh, I'll go over here. My mouse is tracing where the glacier stopped. We call that a moraine, a terminal moraine, the end of the glacier. And so once the temperatures began to rise and the ice started to melt and the glacier started to retreat, um, landforms were left from the glacier. And so as I go to my next slide, you're gonna see two images. The, the one image of where the glacier was 
15,000 years ago. And then the other image is the image of the trail, the Ice Age trail. The red line represents the Ice Age trail. And I hope it looks familiar. I hope it looks similar to the map of the glacier. The story of the trail is the story of the glacier. So those glacial features, um, the land, how the landscape was shaped, that's the story of the trail. We want to protect those features. We want to protect those landmarks. And so the Ice Age National Scenic Trail tells the story of what continental glaciation has done for Wisconsin's landscape. So again, it's, it's almost 1,200 miles long and you're gonna see lots of different things. I just put a, a few photos up right now. Um, kettles, so large depressions that were formed by chunks of ice that got buried and then melted. Um, erratics are boulders and rocks that traveled long, long distances in the ice. Um, eskers are um, rivers underneath the huge um, pieces of ice. Drumlins are um, these, uh, they, they appear in swarms and they're almost um, rolling hills throughout the area and they actually are up ice. So you, you normally don't see them along the trail. Canes, cone-shaped hills. So these are just some of the glacial features that you will see when you are out exploring uh, the Ice Age Trail. Not going to do a deep dive into these, but if, if that is something that interests you and you'd love to learn more about, you know, the glacier and, and do a little more of um, that research, great starting point on our website. So we've got a wonderful glossary. And then we even have more information about the timeline, the geology that you see along the trail. So I encourage you to head to iceagetrail.org and, and check out that information. We also sell in our um, online shop, we actually have a, um, there is a book that is the, it's called um, the geology along the Ice Age Trail. And we sell that. So a great resource to do a much deeper dive about um, the geology of the trail and, and really what that glacier does and what you're looking at and what you're seeing when you're hiking. So again, every National Scenic Trail has a story. Uh, our story is one of the glacier. Um, there's only 11 National Scenic Trails um, in the entire country at this time. And Ice Age Trail is one of them. Um, the Ice Age Trail was designated a National Scenic Trail in 1980. So we are celebrating 42 years of being a National Scenic Trail. Um, the trail itself began many, many years before that. Um, it actually was started to be built in the late 50s, early 60s, 60s. So it's been around for a while, but it officially became designated a National Scenic Trail in 1980 as a result of the National Trails System Act. So it is protected. It is. Um, it took an act of Congress to make it a National Scenic Trail. And again, it's one of only 11 National Scenic Trails in the entire country. So 1,200 miles, give or take, we're still building it. We'll talk a little bit about that in, in just a bit. But our Western terminus is at Interstate State Park, so Polk County, um, in between, or you have the uh, St. Croix Falls Riverway, you have Minnesota, the neighboring state right across the river, and that's our western terminus. Um, the eastern terminus 
Sturgeon Bay is at Potawatomi State Park uh, in Sturgeon Bay. So sometimes we will say, oh, it starts in Sturgeon Bay and it ends in St. Croix Falls, or it starts in Sturgeon Falls or St. Croix Falls and ends in Sturgeon Bay. We just like to say the terminus is in Stur Sturgeon Bay and the terminus is in St. Croix Falls because it's really not a, it's just more of a start point and an end point. So um, sometimes I catch myself saying that and I try not to, but those are where the terminuses are located and it's right there in, one of them is right there in Door County. Uh, we work with lots of partners to um, manage and care for the Ice Age Trail. Uh, businesses, community groups, service clubs, individuals, um, government, private landowners, um, hundreds of partners to help us care and protect and manage the trail. But there, uh, there is a formal partnership with three primary partners, um, the National Park Service, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, and the Ice Age Trail Alliance. So the National Park Service, National, um, caretaker of America's national parks, um, recreational sites all across the United States. So again, as a National Scenic Trail, we partner with the National Park Service to help us with the corridor planning and helping us complete the trail, um, a connected continuous trail. But Wisconsin, um, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, the DNR. So the DNR works to protect and manage Wisconsin's natural resources. So very important to have the DNR involved um, because the trail goes through um, many state parks and state natural areas. So the DNR plays a key role in helping us permanently protect the trail. And then last but not least is the Alliance, the Ice Age Trail Alliance. So our mission is to conserve, create, maintain and promote the Ice Age Trail. We are the nonprofit partner of the trail. We have thousands of members um, in Wisconsin, in the upper Midwest, and even nationally and internationally. So we were that nonprofit partner, boots on the ground, making sure um, we are conserving, creating, maintaining, and promoting the trail. Um, our headquarters, our office headquarters is in Cross Plains, Wisconsin. Um, so Southwest Wisconsin and Dane County. Um, we have about 17 full-time staff and we have over 5,500 members. So it takes lots of people to really help us with this mission. Um, we're still building the trail. Uh, give or take, there's about 700 miles of completed blazed Ice Age Trail. So our volunteers are out there building boardwalks, um, building tread, stone walkways, stone walls. Um, we are also um, a land trust. So we do a lot of habitat restoration. You know, here's a nice a before and an after. So, you know, we wanna make sure the trail is passable and um, safe for people to, um, to walk on. So we are out there, you know, building this trail, um, taking care of this trail. This is my coworker, Dave, um, if mother nature you know, um, comes through with the winds and the rains and the, the downed trees, well, we're gonna be the ones that get out there and fix it. So this, this is the trail marker. You can't really see it, but once Dave comes through, we wanna clear that trail. So we're out there all the time, making sure the trail is in good shape and it's a, 
It's an ongoing effort. Like I mentioned before, we are, uh, the Alliance is an accredited land trust. So we wanna permanently protect the, the trail and make sure that where the trail is, it is protected into perpetuity. So we're also responsible for um, management of a land that we own and um, where we hold easements. So we're making sure we're managing invasive species, restoring native habitat, um, monitoring property easements. So, you know, again, it's an ongoing effort to do all these things. And then we try to have a little fun too. We do a lot of outreach and education, um, partnering with the local library to do a presentation, working a booth at an expo, going to the farmer's market, leading a hike, um, all things to help uh, get new people out on the trail and answer questions and you know just expand our audience. We have a great youth and education program where we're working with um, kids of all ages for day hikes and backpacks and service projects. So really trying to, to get all types of users out and enjoying the trail. Um, Got to give a really quick shout out to our volunteers. Uh, in 2021, we had over 63,000 volunteer hours. So that was almost 33 staff members. Um, lots and lots of helping hands with our mission. Our boots on the ground right there in Sturgeon Bay, the Lake Shore chapter is our local chapter in the area. Lots of trail maintenance, stewardship. Um, they're leading hikes. They're doing marketing and promotion. Lots of ways to get involved with the Lakeshore chapter. If you're on our website, you can go to about the uh, IATA and then click on volunteer chapters. And then you can, you can actually do, you can look at all the chapters here, but when you scroll over the map, the chapter becomes highlighted and you can click on that and get, um, get lots of information about the local chapter and kind of what they're doing in the area. Um, hikes that are coming up, uh, shuttles, um, if they have a hiking award program. So I do invite everyone to maybe take a moment and, and see what our local Lakeshore chapter is doing since it's right there in your area. So now that you've got a little background about the trail, the significance of the Ice Age Trail, why it's a National Scenic Trail, a little bit of information about the Ice Age Trail Alliance, um, we want to talk about your hike. You know, what is what does hike your own hike mean? Um, we get asked a lot of questions. Uh, what's the best way to do this? What's the best way to do that? What's the best resource? Blah, blah. Our answer is always whatever works for you. So just think through what do you want to do? How do you want to do it? Um, whatever works best for you is our answer. So is it a, are you a segment hiker? You're going piece by piece. Are you thinking I'm going to do it in one big, big adventure? Um, I'm a weekend warrior. I'm just going to maybe do day trips. Maybe it's something to get out with the family. All excellent answers on hiking your own hike. So when you're on the Ice Age Trail, you're going to want to follow the yellow blaze. So every National Scenic Trail has a blaze. Ours is yellow. Uh, it could be on a tree, on a post, uh, on a light pole. Um, it could be in lots of different places, but the yellow blaze and the Ice Age emblem, that's what you're going to want to look for when you're out hiking the Ice Age Trail. Um, you may see two other colors. A, you may see a blue blaze and you may also see a white blaze. So a blue blaze will indicate a spur or an access trail. 
usually it's a dead end. So maybe it's uh, you or you're in a parking lot, you hike the blue blaze, and then you get hooked up with the yellow blaze. Maybe you're on the yellow blaze, you go on the blue blaze to an overlook, and then you have to turn around and come back. So it's a spur or an access trail. A white blaze is gonna indicate a loop. So it will leave the Ice Age Trail, but it will later return. So it will be, it will take you off the Ice Age Trail, but it will take you right back on as well. So that's the white blaze. And then depending on where you are, like if you're in a state park or a county park, you may see lots of different emblems because of that park and some of the trail markings on that park. So it's really important to kind of um, pay attention before you start and look through all of the different uh, emblems and maybe become familiar with, with what they look like. So like I said, we are still working to close the gaps. The image you see on screen is a screenshot of our interactive map. And here's a close-up image. So I want to point out the solid red line. So that is our completed blazed ice age trail. Now I'm gonna point out the dotted red line. That is a suggested road walk. So that is not official trail. That is just a suggested road walk on how to get from a blazed sec segment to another blazed segment. Um, the completed trail will have the yellow blazes. The connecting road walks will not be blazed. So if you are walking these connecting road walks, you will not see any trail markings. They're also suggested. Um, we look at safety. First, we, we try to do our suggested road walks on less traveled roads. But again, these are only suggested. So if you are, if one of your goals is to become a thousand miler and hike the entire Ice Age Trail, you will have to hike the blazed trail and the connecting road walks. But again, since these are suggested, yours might look a little different. So before heading out, check our website, iceagetrail.org. Um, bookmark it if you can. It is a fabulous resource. There's so much information on there. And we're going to do a little walkthrough here in a little bit, but lots of information on the iceagetrail.org website. Um, once you've checked that out and you kind of have an idea of what you're thinking, where you want to go, how long do you want to go, um, have a plan. Tell someone your plan. I know it sounds really obvious, but um, really important to think through, you know, what your hike's going to look like. Is it just a quick little three-mile jaunt? Is it I'm going for multiple days? Where should I park? Where's water? Think through that plan and tell someone your plan so um, someone else knows where you are and when they should expect you back. Um, connect with the local chapters. I, I introduced the Lakeshore chapter earlier, but again, these are our volunteers in the area. Um, they can be a great resource for trail conditions. Uh, they can also be a great resource as a trail angel. So we call a trail angel someone who really is there to help, help you as a hiker. Um, they may help with a shuttle. They may help with a water drop. Some of our trail angels even um, let um, long distance hikers camp in their yard um, or in their garage if it's raining. So lots of different ways trail angels can help. Um, our trail angel list is, is not public, but if you go to our website and look under Lakeshore chapter, 
there will be information on how to get in contact with our trail angels. They are all volunteers. So we really um, encourage you to think ahead when you are asking for trail angel help. Um, because again, they may, they really, really want to be available, but they just might not be. So um, really think through um, how to how to plan ahead if you're if you're looking for some trail angel assistance. Um, another great resource, Facebook. Um, we have two very active Facebook groups, um, Thousand Miler Wannabes and then Ice Age Trail. So these are our groups. So that means you will you'd go into Facebook, you'd search for Thousand Miler Wannabe, you would search for Ice Age Trail, and then you have to request uh, becoming a member. But then once you are accepted, it really is an, uh, a really nice um, space to put questions, um, pictures, you can show photos. Um, it's a really, really nice opportunity to meet other hikers. So, you know, Facebook, depending on how active you are on it or how much you wanna be on it, but um, lots of good information there about um, trail conditions and shuttles and just photos, great place to, um, to see photos and what people are doing and, and kind of follow along their journey. And then leave no trace. Um, I always introduce uh, and talk about leave no trace. It, it is something we have to be very, very aware of to make sure we are taking care of our, our public green spaces. I mean, Ice Age Trail, state parks, county parks, wherever it is, um, please leave our natural places better than when we found them. Um, not going to do a deep dive into the leave no trace principles, but it's really, really important, you know, to plan ahead, to hike on durable surfaces. Um, let's make sure we're disposing of our waste properly. You know, there's a huge, unfortunately, there's a huge issue with, with dog poop and dog waste. So we we need we need people to be respectful and and making sure they're they're picking that up and packing it out. Um, you just can't leave it there, unfortunately. So um, make sure though you're leaving the other things there. You know, respecting the wildlife and think through ways of how you can be a considerate hiker to other visitors. So very important um, to leave no trace. Uh, don't know if there's any backpackers tuned in. Um, not going to spend a lot of time on this, but we have a great uh, section on our website just for backpacking. But definitely um, talk to the experts um, about a pack shakedown. Um, make sure you are prepared, you know, with your pack, what's in it, what do you have to have, Maybe what what are the things you can do without? Make sure it fits properly. So, you know, talk to maybe the local expert. I know Bayshore Outfitters is right there in Sturgeon Bay, so um, they know what they're doing. Talk to that expert and make sure you're feeling good with your pack and and how it fits you. Uh, very very important to check or to check the trail conditions. So again, um, talking about the local chapters making sure you're, you know, before you head out, is there high water? Are there closures? Was there a storm? You know, check those trail conditions before you leave. That's important no matter where you're going or how you're hiking. Um, so no need for bounce boxes. So um, a lot of other national scenic trails are very remote um, and very much away from communities. So people will mail boxes to themselves to a local post office in near the trail. And then um, they'll go to that post office and pick it up. You can still do that on the Ice Age Trail, but really the cool thing about the Ice Age Trail is you are hiking right through 
lots of communities. So use those trail communities as an opportunity to resupply. Um, we have a, a colleague who hiked. It's been, it's been 19 years since he did his through hike. So lots of things has changed, but this still kind of holds true. He would say, if you can survive um, by visiting the gas station and finding something to eat at the gas station, you should be able to survive the Ice Age Trail. So there's lot, there are lots of opportunities to resupply within our trail communities and, and within, within those gas station places. So um, another great hint, uh, train with a shorter backpacking trip. Ice Age Trail, 1200 miles, do it in chunks, you know, do it in week, you know, do it a week at a time or do it a couple of days at a time. Uh, we'll give a shout out to the Superior Trail. That's a great, great through hike. It's about 300 miles, so not as long, but a really good training um, trip if you're interested. So now our resources. I already talked about our Ice Age Trail website, iceagetrail.org, but I'm going to talk about it again uh, because it's such a great resource. Um, right on our homepage, you're going to see Explore the Trail. So these are just screenshots. So I, I'm, I'm not live with a demo, but um, I've kind of got it circled there. So click. you can click on Explore the Trail, and then you're going to see lots of things. One, The first thing I want to talk about is our online hiker resource map. So this is when you're under Explore the Trail, you go down to hiker resources and map, guidebook, and more. So when you find that um, online hiker resource map, it's live. It's live on our website. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can search. Um, so this is a, just a really, really good tool to get you started. You can click on the trail and it will highlight. It will tell you how long it is. It will tell you how long the connecting routes are. The more you zoom in, the more information you're going to get. So parking, camping, um, if it's a trail community, lots of things to talk about. One really important one is like a trail alert. So these are managed by the Ice Age Trail Alliance staff. We're not immediate to get up trail alerts, but we're pretty darn good. Uh, we work really, really hard to keep our hiker resource map updated. It's not instantaneous, but it's, it's let me tell you, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's really good. So if there is a trail alert, there will be, I don't know if you guys can see it, but towards the bottom, I should have circled it. There's a emblem with a, it's yellow with an exclamation point. That's going to pop out. And that will give you more information about that alert. Now, this one's actually an old alert. So it's no longer on our website. Um, I shouldn't have used it as an example, but it will tell you what's going on. It's, oh, it's a bridge. A bridge is closed. So what does that mean? It means there's a reroute. So when you click on that alert emblem, it's going to tell you what's going on. So again, really great way to plan ahead before you make a trip somewhere because we don't want you to drive two or three hours and then realize, oh, there's been a trail alert and this section of trail has been out because they're, they're rebuilding a bridge. So check the trail alerts on the interactive hiker map. So once you've kind of played around with that on our website and you're thinking, I'm, I'm a little more serious, I'm ready to take it to the next level, um, we have publications for sale. Uh, the Ice Age Trail Alliance produces these publications. Um, I'll say a lot of blood, sweat, and tears go into them, but they are absolutely amazing resources. We produce these every three years, so our current editions um, are out right now, and we are working on the next round. Um, so the new edition 
will come out spring sometime in 2023. But we have our atlas, our guidebook, and our data book. So the atlas is going to be maps. It's going to be all about maps. Um, it, you know, it'll have information about the symbols and how to use it, but then it's a hundred pages of maps. So if you're into the maps, the Atlas is a great tool for you. Um, our guidebook is going to have maps, but it's going to be more of a narrative. Um, it's give or take 300 pages, so it's thicker, but it, it's a great narrative. Um, it's going to tell you more of the story. It's going to be kind of a, um, you know, it's going to explain the trail and what you're seeing, those glacial features, a little bit of the history. Um, the guidebook will only have the blazed trail. The atlas has all of it. They have the blazed trail, but then they also have the suggested connecting roadwalks. The atlas maps are primarily that of the blazed trail. So just something to think about. And then the data book. Um, I tease because there's there's absolutely nothing pretty about the data book, but there's some, it's all data. It's really, really good data. Our through hikers, this is what they want. Um, it is turn by turn, point by point. It still has great information about camping and parking and water and rules and regulations, but there's really no pictures, um, there's no narrative, but it, again, really, really good data. So depending on what you want, Atlas, guidebook, data book, we've also got an app. So um, it, it's not our app. Um, it is the, it's called the Far Out app. Um, we partner with the designer of this app. And so um, if there are changes, if there are trail alerts, we work with Far Out to get the app updated. There is a cost to this app. Um, I wanna say it's, it's $25 for all the, the sections that you need, but we've heard really, really, really good um, feedback from our hikers. Um, if you're interested, we are doing a presentation, um, kind of a deep dive into Far Out on September 20, 26th at 6.30. You can go to our website, on our, it's on our calendar, and you can, you can sign up for that. Um, but yeah, great tool if, if you're interested in using your phone um, as a hiking resource. And then more information on our website. Um, I mentioned that our publications are printed every three years. So we have information on our website with um, changes. So, you know, there's, there's spreadsheet with updates. Um, there's a great section on um, how to become a thousand miler. Again, if, if hiking the entire trail is your goal, um, you can find out, you know, what needs to be done, how to do it. Um, great frequently asked questions. And then, you know, it's just good resource. Check that out. Um, more information on, you know, exploring, exploring the trail. If you need a little more motivation, um, our chapters have hiking award programs kind of fun to, you know, keep you motivated. I love this photo of the backpack. Uh, I think this person has pretty much all of them. I think they've been able to um, successfully finish all of the chapter award, hiking award programs, uh, lots of patches on that backpack. But um, Lake Shore has the Hall of Camers. So if you hike all of the, the trail, I believe it's in the, the Northern Kettle area and, and fill out a little, um, I think there, there's a small cost to kind of cover what it, the expense of the patch and the mailings, but um, you can earn the Hall of Camers patch. So kind of fun. Um, if you're into maybe 
um, kind of like a treasure hunt. Um, we have the cold cash program. So um, geocaching, geocaching is where participants are using um, a GPS device to find a cache uh, somewhere. And usually that cache is, is a box with trinkets. Um, earth cat, an earth cache is using a GPS device to find um, an earth feature, a natural feature. So it's not a box, it's a natural feature um, in the area. And then the cold cache is actually specific to the Ice Age Trail. So you're looking for an earth cache, you're looking for a natural landform, but you're right on the Ice Age Trail. So that's kind of fun where you can, you know, you've got your, your route, you're on your segment, but it's really a great way to learn a little more about the trail and the glacier and those glacial features. And of course we have patches. So um, there on the screen, it's, it's a series. You can earn up to five patches and then you, you can earn your, your cold cash um, certification, I guess I'll call it. So lots more info on our website. Um, Want to give a shout out to Sturgeon Bay. They, uh, Sturgeon Bay is one of our 17 trail communities. So we're super happy that the Eastern, the home of the Eastern Terminus is a trail community. This is a voluntary partnership. Uh, Sturgeon Bay has um, gone above and beyond. They've made a, a financial contribution to the Alliance. They filled out an application and it's, it's really a great partnership to support the trail and to support the Alliance. And so, you know, we want to make sure we're supporting Sturgeon Bay as well. So we want to, we want to tell our hikers about all the cool things in Sturgeon Bay and make sure they understand that it's a, it's a great hiker destination. Um, I know Laura's going to talk a little bit about this, but I got to give a shout out. We have the Ice Age Trail Explorer Backpack. So this is available for free to check out at the library. Um, we've got the atlas and the guidebook in the backpack. We've got binoculars, a compass, um, some fun identifiers for trees and plants and songbirds. Um, so just a, a really fun way to enjoy it yourself or maybe take the family or the grandkids, head on out or head on over to the, the library and check it out for the day or the week and you know, start exploring. A few quick things kind of to wrap up before, know before you go. Um, it is free to hike the Ice Age National Scenic Trail. There are no permits needed. Um, some other National Scenic Trails, you do need a permit before you can start hiking it, you know, depending on where you're going, how far you're going. You do not need anything like that for the Ice Age Trail, but um, it's not, it might not be free to park. So depending on where you are, you may have to pay to park your vehicle. Um, if you're in the Dane, or excuse me, the DNR properties, so the state parks, state forests, um, you're going to need a vehicle sticker. If you want to camp at the state parks, if you want to reserve the backpack shelters, you're going to need to reserve those through the DNR. Um, you don't need any kind of sticker for the state natural areas. You know, depending on what county you're in, there might be county fees. So it is important to, to know where you are, um, know if there's a fee to park, to park where you leave your vehicle and then go enjoy your hike. We do a lot of social media. We have, a, we have an e-newsletter e that we send out once a month. I encourage everyone to uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Um, right on our homepage, um, there's the email sign up. Really, really easy. You just put your name 
your email and, and let us know what, what one you want. Um, <clears throat> again, we send that out monthly. Uh, great way to kind of stay in the loop in terms of what's going on. Uh, here is information about our Mammoth Hike Challenge. So this is the image of the patch, the commemorative patch for this year's challenge. Um, we are challenging folks to hike 42 miles and visit at least three trail communities. So it is a free challenge. You can sign up on our website. You have the entire month of October to do it. Uh, you can do it on your own. You can do it with a, a couple, a partner. You can do it as a team. Um, we, we really don't care how you do it. We just hope that you, you get out there, enjoy the trail. Um, the miles don't have to be unique. Uh, you can count out and backs. I tell people you can even count the miles if you happen to get lost. Um, we just want you out there having fun and then showing some support to our trail communities. And we're gonna have lots of things going on in October. So I invite everyone to kind of follow us and check our calendar because we are continuously um, adding <clears throat> events to the calendar. So. You know, you can get out and enjoy the Sturgeon Bay segment right there in Sturgeon Bay. You might sneak down to Point Beach, which is in Two Rivers. Um, just we hope you're we hope you're out and enjoying the beautiful fall weather. So with that, um, I'll turn it I'll turn it back to Laura. If we have any questions or comments or anything to anything to share, anything else to share. Thank you. That was really filled with information. I a lot of it I had never heard before. Um, in October, of course, it's gorgeous in Wisconsin with the changing of the leaves. So perfect time to get out. Um, as you mentioned, we do have this Ice Age Trail backpack here in the library over near my desk. I'm the adult services librarian near the big window in Sturgeon Bay in the library. And um, I'm hoping to see someone come in and check it out. Um, there's some as she as Amy mentioned, we have the guidebook in the backpack and the atlas. We also have separate copies of these two books to check out from the library, so you don't have to take out the backpack in order to check them out. Um, these are really nice little very lightweight guides on birds and trees and wild animals um, and also there's a binoculars and. This was I had I was not aware of this what the word actually meant but scat <laughs> this was pretty interesting um, scat of all of the wild animals that you can it will help you identify. Um, I Hopefully had to you that don't see a lot of it. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it I, it's a new word to me and there is even a first aid aid um, pack in the backpack so I hope someone will come in soon and check it out. Um, also we have. Some years ago, we had a thousand miler um, Melanie come and speak to the li at in the library about her experience hiking the trail and here's the book that she published and that you can come in and check out. Awesome. And one other thing I want to mention is um, destination um, Sturgeon Bay is very involved in or destination door county has um, gone along and um, with the program of leave no trace. So that's official here in Door County and um, Sturgeon Bay has a little map that you can come and get at the library also um, that on one side has walking areas for Sturgeon Bay itself and then on the other side the Ice Age Trail where it comes through this area. So lots of things you can come and get through the library and I want to thank you Amy for that very informative um, talk. I'm going to yeah, see thank if I you can get up there. <laughs> We're happy to have uh, Sturgeon Bay as a trail community and it's home of the Eastern Terminus. It's an awesome destination um, for the Ice Age Trail supporters and hikers. Does anyone in the audience have a question? I've not seen anything in the chat, so I guess uh, with that, we'll wrap it up. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, thanks for the opportunity. We hope to see you out hiking in October. Again, it's a free challenge. You can head to the website and 
and sign up, get the team together or do it on your own. Um, we're looking to have a, a great turnout. Um, we've got about 3,500 people registered so far. So we're, we're excited to see all the stories and the photos and um, hear, the, hear what everybody's doing for the challenge. And we will put this video out on YouTube in our Facebook um, page so that if anyone wants to um, review some of the material that was covered here, um, that will be available. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.